Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Don McKay in here. Don McKay in the morning on the all new radio on fire.com. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. Hope everybody had a great holiday, extended holiday, 4th of July, all that good stuff. Here on the program, we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with interviews and original reporting from across this country, emanating from our studios in Baltimore and Atlanta. Show is fun, show is upbeat, but also have to expose what is really going on. Whole lot of whole lot of things going on. Radio Fire is Black Voices giving you the American story. New episodes of the program. Dropping daily, 8 a.m., but I don't want you to miss any of our live broadcasts. In addition to the 8 a.m. program, we drop content throughout the day as news happens. Hit that notification bell so you get an alert whenever we go live. A lot of things a lot of things that I need to get into this morning. Of course, uh, whenever we come out of a 4th of July weekend, there is that probability for, you know, bad news and, uh, you know, death. I mean, that can happen just, you know, any time. Chicago, 96 people shot, including two cops, 14 killed in Chicago over the 4th of July. Well, that is sad. Uh, three were injured, including a nine-year-old boy from what they're calling illegal fireworks in Carroll County. That is in Maryland. Also, uh, a 16-year-old boy among at least seven shot in Baltimore on Monday. Yeah, just uh, just a, a whole array of things. Several were injured after a U-Haul full of fireworks exploded in Ohio. Yeah, just all, all, all kind of stuff going on. All kind of stuff going on. Uh, we are still talking about the Surfside condo collapse and the rescue efforts that are going on there. Uh, we've been following this story pretty closely. Just a just a sad thing all around. When you uh, look at that and uh, the death toll in this Surfside condo collapse has hit 28 people right now. 28 people. So search and rescue uh, crews have recovered. You know this another victim, which brought that toll to 28 as of last night 117 people still unaccounted for according to Miami-Dade County Mayor earlier in the day they announced the recovery of three bodies after these search efforts resumed so they demolished the rest of the structure on the 4th of July and what had remained standing of that building. They were scared that it was going to fall on them. Residents wanted to go back in the building to get artifacts, you know, etc. Uh, they did not allow that. Many family members were worried that they bringing down this building, the built, bringing down the rest of the building, would put additional debris over, you know, uh, the missing folks. But of course, uh, the search and rescue people said we, we put down a tarp or something like that. And that was going to prevent or, or allow them to e- easily remove what had fallen. So uh, structure, as I said, demolished around 1030 on the 4th. They use a method that is called energetic felling. Energetic felling. So it's described as a process that uses small 
strategically placed explosives and relies on gravity to bring the building down. I mean, what, what else are they relying on? All right, so um, the demolition course planned because this is Florida. Tropical Storm Elsa is approaching the area. So this went exactly the way that they planned, according to the mayor. And they said that uh, this is going to allow the search to more safely expand to the area next to where the structure had been. So, um, you know, I have really been critical of the way that this has been handled. But speaking to some people, they seem to think I'm being too hard on the rescuer, uh, search and rescue folks. I think that things should be moving faster, could be moving faster. Uh, there's so many people involved that they just could not, they still have not reached the bottom of this pile. All the, all the equipment that they have and, and all this stuff. But, you know, um, I am, you know, sitting in the studio in Baltimore. So uh, what do I know, right? A uh, pile of rubble next to the building was actually what had been holding up the structure. The mayor says, says it was making it unsafe for crews to be there. And when I hear stuff like that, it just frustrates me because if this is such a great idea, why wasn't this done a long time ago? So you mean to tell me for over a week, they were pussyfooting around, scared to go in the area where they should have gone because the building was up. Why did they take this building down a long time ago? You wait for the storm to come when the probability of survivors has greatly diminished. Now you come up with the bright idea of taking the building down after the probability of finding survivors has just about extinguished then you come up with this great idea this is why this is why i don't agree with the way this whole thing has been handled she said that we truly could not continue without bringing the building down you should have brought the building down a week ago maybe we could have found some people had alive had you brought the building down a week ago So the demolition came after part of the building fell early in the morning of June 24th. Why didn't you bring the building down June 24th? No? That doesn't make sense? Yeah, I'm sitting in the studio here in Baltimore, Maryland. But these things seem obvious to me. If they could bring the building down successfully, safely, on July 4th, why didn't you think to bring the building down on July 24th? Or on June 24th, rather. June 24th. Yeah. All right. So they're digging. And the people, the folks who are in charge of this, the politicians, I don't know. But we're going to hear how great of a job search and rescue did and, and I'm not I guess I'm not faulting the actual search and rescue workers I'm faulting the people who are in charge who are giving the orders they claim that this heavy equipment is now able to move around the site as needed blah 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 we shall see they claim that before this demolition before the demolition Equipment was limited as to where it could be used on the site. So they didn't think to bring this stuff down until a storm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The residents, of course, you know, had to evacuate not only this building, multiple buildings. This whole thing has been a mess. Two of the three most recently recovered victims have been identified, 66-year-old and a 68-year-old. 
58 year old was identified on the 4th. Victims have, that have been recovered thus far range in age from 4 to 92 years old. Those who died include a 4 and 10 year old uh, pair of sis- uh, sisters, 4 and 10 year old an elderly couple and the daughter of a firefighter. Yeah, it is it is just a sad thing. So Tropical Storm Elsa is uh, approaching. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency over the weekend for 15 counties, including Miami-Dade, because of this tropical storm. Now, Surfside is no longer in Elsa's forecast cone, but the area could still receive some heavy rain from the storm. So that is good news that it's not in the uh, forecast cone. Governor DeSantis has expressed his support for the demolition. And, you know, I mean, I guess it's, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, at Radio on Fire. Of course, we are sending our thoughts and prayers, love and strength to all those affected by this tragedy. Diamond K in the Morning is now available on the WRF Radio app. Simply download WRF Radio in your app store. Leave me a comment. Scroll your timeline. Attend a Zoom meeting on mute. Do some online shopping. Send an email. All while listening to Diamond K in the Morning. Program is uh, available on demand. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Of course, RadioOnFire.com. Get breaking news, adult conversations covering topics that are important to black culture. Visit RadioFire.com for our original podcast, radio, and TV programs. You want to support Diamond K in the morning. Very easy to do that. I'm able to deliver our news and our views on the program because of our listeners, sponsors, and of course your donations. Diamond K in the morning is powered by the people. You can make a one-time donation. Join our VIP club RadioFire.com slash donate. As I said on social media, at the Diamond K Show, at Radio on Fire, you need to get with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. Come back with more of the show after this. Welcome back. You're being Diamond K in here. Diamond K in the morning on the all new radio on fire.com. As the Tokyo Olympics approach, COVID 19 virus worries continue to rise in Japan. Folks are nervous, they're scared. The pressure of hosting. The Olympics during a still active pandemic is really beginning to show in Japan. The games begin July 23rd. July 23rd, less than 20 days. So organizers have determined that they will go on. They are going to happen. Even with a reduced number of spectators, or possibly none at all, there's still that's still up in the air. Japan has made, you know, remarkable progress to vaccinate its population against COVID-19. The drive to vaccinate has lost a lot of steam because of supply shortages. And with Tens of thousands of visitors coming to a country that only 13.8% is fully vaccinated. 
that is uh, a recipe for disaster, potentially. Gaps in border control have emerged. And it's, it's really highlighted by the discovery of infections among the newly arrived team from Uganda with positive tests for the highly contagious Delta variant. There is the potential for disaster here, as, as you can see. So cases are growing in Tokyo. So have fears that the games are going to spread the virus. They still have not determined if they're going to have spectators regardless of the situation. That's something that we're going to have to continue to follow. On uh, yesterday, Tokyo confirmed 342 new cases, the 16th, 16th straight day of an increase. On Saturday, the capital reported 716 cases, which is the highest in over a month. So, um, as te- teams are starting to arrive and they're being tested, and it is, uh, it is a lot. It is a lot. Many are supporting having no spectators for events because the damage from a worse outbreak would be far greater. So I don't think they're going to have spectators. I mean, we could watch it on TV. Imagine if you flew all the way out there, though, and then you're going to just turn around and have to watch it on TV like everybody else. I wouldn't be going there right now anyway. I suppose unless I'm competing. (laughs) Then... And then still, I'm looking at it, you know, sideways. It is not like America everywhere you go. Yeah, but uh, ready, steady, Tokyo. It is, I mean, there's so much. So much vaccine efforts uh, have slowed, not uh, they're slowed over here, and they have slowed evidently across the world. Don McKay, good morning, all new radio on fire.com. Don McKay, good morning is sponsored by the Sobe Group. Check out Don McKay, that is me, my latest single, God Will Do It. On Apple Music, everywhere that you get music, God will do it. Search Diamond K, God will do it. We'll be back with more of the show after this. And we are back. Maryland's highest court has (laughs) dismissed the state's appeals in unemployment lawsuits. Yesterday, Governor Larry Hogan of Maryland defeated in court again. He tried to appeal the lawsuit aimed at blocking the state from stopping extra federal unemployment benefits. They have sent the case back to the lower court. What does this court ruling mean? The court ruling means that unemployed residents will continue to temporarily receive federally funded enhanced unemployment benefits. Oh, Larry Hogan is so mad. Boss Hog is not feeling that. He doesn't want he doesn't want to help unemployed people. Oh no. He's he's so upset about this. Anyway, the next step will be for the circuit court to hold a full hearing on the issue. And of course, Governor Hog is going to push back on that. 
The state's highest court has said that we are sending this back. The injunction remains in effect and we will let the circuit court take it from here. So, as you can see, uh, Republicans really, (laughs) Republicans really not operating in the best interest of the Republic. Early in June, Hogan announced that Maryland was going to discontinue the enhanced pandemic federal unemployment benefits. Like that made sense. He wanted to reinstate the work search requirements starting July the 3rd. The benefits in Maryland were set to expire 11.59 on July 3rd. No, that's not what happened, Boss Hog. So uh, the Baltimore City Circuit Court Judge Lawrence Fletcher Hill over the weekend granted a temporary restraining order to stop the state of Maryland from ending these federal unemployment benefits. When I see rich people on TV talking about these folks are getting you know, $300 more over minimum wage, how dare they? They need to be back at work. I mean, you see these rich people saying this. Talking about people that are just getting by, getting some extra money over top of the minimum wage. We're talking about the minimum. And you see these rich people talking smack. These were the same rich people applying for benefits for their uh, companies. PPP loans and such. The hypocrisy is maddening. Circuit Court wrote this. The court finds that plaintiffs have satisfied all four of the preliminary injunctive relief factors and have shown a threat of immediate, substantial, irreparable harm. Oh, yeah. Governor said Saturday that the state would appeal. Same day, the state's second highest court, Maryland Court of Special Appeals, denied the motion to stay the temporary restraining order, causing Boss Hog to roll over. <laughs> Yep. The lame duck, Governor Hogan, on his last leg. He'll be out of here soon, thankfully. Thankfully. I am so tired of this governor. Now, there are a record number of jobs available. That is true. And folks will take those jobs. But here's the thing. Yeah, a lot of people leaving the workforce. A lot of people are scared to come back to work in certain fields. Let's let's also keep in mind that many workers don't feel valued, don't feel that the minimum wage is worth the risk. So you think that taking away the unemployment benefits is going to bring back workers who who are potentially overqualified for some of these jobs to take those risks it's probably not going to do that maybe it will maybe it won't but the same way that the PPP loans for these businesses went through folks who have been approved for unemployment deserve to get it at least right now We're still in the middle of a pandemic. One day they say it's over. Next day, the Delta variant is threatening to bring the whole thing down again. It's still too soon to act like all these workers are just going to come back 
on the front line. Some people are on the front lines, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to be on the front lines. Yeah, management's going to have to do some more work. Okay. And the whole thing is going to, you know, going to figure itself out. You were just sending these folks home, laying them off, and now you think they're going to run back? They don't feel valued. They don't feel that the risk is worth the reward, (laughs) the minimum wage reward. When I hear rich folks talking about there's a record number of jobs, we're talking about low paying jobs. So maybe these people who are working in these low paying jobs have taken the time of the pandemic to educate themselves and, and try to strive and look for a higher paying job. Yeah, that's what's happening. Why won't they come back to McDonald's? They're moving on, fam. Boss Hog says that there are a number, record number of jobs available. This program is making it harder to fill them and hurting our restaurants and small businesses. No, they need to find somebody else. Extend their recruitment efforts. But taking away unemployment is not going to make people rush into Burger King and fill out an application. Oh, I'm so glad. Larry Hogan is on his way out the door. Goodness gracious. The case now returns to Fletcher Hill who over the weekend issued this 10-day temporary restraining order to allow the federal benefits to continue. People are not back on their feet just yet. Governor Hogan, he doesn't care. He's been leveraging the system in his favor for longer than I care to remember. Leveraging the system. Oh, yes. Governor Hogan leverages the system to his benefit, to his company's benefits. As I said, so many Marylanders are facing a crisis at this point. And this lame duck governor is trying to kick people when they are down. Economy is improving. COVID-19 numbers are down. But we are not there just yet. Many Marylanders really rely on those benefits. Well, benefits, September is when the federal benefits will end September. That makes sense to me. Oh, yeah. Down McCain in the morning on the all-new RadioOnFire.com. Of course, I am here at 8 a.m. weekdays and as news happens. RadioOnFire.com. Stay there for the latest. Latest and the greatest. My latest single, God Will Do It, is available now. Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere you get music from YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K. Of course, you can get episodes of Diamond K in the Morning, The Diamond K Show, which airs on Saturdays. Diamond K in the Morning, political trending stories, The Diamond K Show. I go in the mix. 6 p.m. on Saturdays. You want to get at me at the Diamond K Show at Radio on Fire, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Did I say that I'm happy that Boss Hog Larry Hogan is on his way out the door? Just such a such a medium. <laughs> Mediocre white man, Larry Hogan is. 
course, I will be back, as I said, throughout the day as news happens. So much to get into. I'm like to do that. See you guys later on.